Colorectal cancer is a cancer occurs in the large bowel and the rectum. We collectively call them colorectal cancers. As predominantly is cancers found in the rectum. And as you can see, the distribution of these cancers and it's uh, nearly 70% of the cases are found on the left side of the colon compared to 30% of the cases are on the right side. And majority on the left side, again, 50 to 60% of these cancers are found in the rectum and the sigmoid colon. If you see the distribution between the men and women, the rectal cancers and the rest of the colonic cancers, both are equally affected. And these cancers are located in the bony pelvis, a very restricted area in the lower abdomen and with a lot of vital structures. And treating these cancers are quite challenging. The common symptom is the bleeding from back passage, which is a particularly painless bleeding. It can happen now and then, and that's not associated with every bowel movement, and uh, sometimes with gaps, even days, weeks, or months. The next common sign is constipation and diarrhea. People also get discomfort and distension of the abdomen, and lower part of the abdomen, you get time to time some pain and lower backache. At the latter part of the disease, of course, uh, they can have unintentional weight loss and uh, loss of appetite and involvement of the surrounding structures like a urinary bladder and the vagina. You can have uh, abnormal pathways created by these cancers and you can have various kinds of discharges through these orifices. And the most scary thing about these cancers is they are silent for some time. So it's nearly five to 10 years time, sometimes these cancers are silent. And that is why we have to be vigilant and more focused on the guidelines of the screening. Most colorectal cancers occurs at the age of 60s and 70s. By that time, of course, they have very advanced disease. To detect this disease at very early stage, we should detect them at least 10 years prior to become symptomatic. So because of that, the, in the general population majority, we recommend should undergo screening at the age of 50, where they need thorough physical examination and digital rectal examination and fecal occult blood to detect microscopic bleeding from the gut or from these lesions and full colonoscopy to detect the entire colon. And if anyone is having difficult to undergo colonoscopy, at least flexible sigmoidoscopy and conjunction with the radiological imaging to complete evaluation of the colon. We found a lot of young people are being diagnosed with rectal cancers all over the world as well as in Sri Lanka. So we recommend the people, those who are having genetic predispositions like found to have polyps in the past and some of the bowel conditions like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and these individuals should undergo at least at the age of 40 a screening. So screening is very important to detect these lesions at very early stage and the outcome is better. When we take last 10 to 5 years time, of course, the development of surgical technology and techniques and the medicine as well as the devices and the monitoring, all these areas develop and it has revolutionized treatments for these cancers. Most important part is the accurate diagnosis and staging of the disease. So for that, we have full colonoscopy and biopsy, and then we move on to the staging the disease with contrast enhanced CT scan, chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and then PET scan if necessary, and then Especially for the rectal cancers, we do pelvic MRI, which gives uh, more soft tissue information, delineation, as well as uh, involvement of the lymph nodes, and particularly involvement of the sphincters. When it comes to chemotherapy and radiotherapy, we have very advanced chemotherapy at the moment. And uh, when it comes to radiotherapy, it is more precise than earlier. Of course, we have the latest machines to give, give these radiation to particular region of the, the body with one millimeter precision. 
and it is more accurate and there's no collateral damage to surrounding structures and we can give successful treatment along with the surgery. Of course, uh, this is quite challenging area. The lower part of the rectum, which is very close to the inner canal or the sphincter system, where we have the voluntary and involuntary sphincters very close to the cancers. Especially if the cancer is above the internal sphincters and we can take the cancer completely out without damaging internal or external sphincters, we can preserve these sphincters and their functions, even if it is towards or close to the internal sphincter, we can get rid of the internal sphincter and spare the external sphincter where the people have voluntary control of their bowel movements. And sometimes we put a temporary stoma just to divert the, the passage until we get the wounds healed. Then after six to eight weeks time, we put everything back together. And then once they get the complete bowel control and we close the stoma, and complete the procedure. These are very complex procedures which are done in keyhole procedures. Advantage of doing keyhole procedures actually the pain free and the patients are mobilizing quickly and they are, they are going home very quickly. Actually the average hospital stays nearly maximum of five days and there's no need of ICU care. Once they are discharged from the hospital, we have 24-7 access to the, our department and whenever necessary, patients can come. Those who have got temporary stomas, we keep only for six to eight weeks maximum and then we bring them down and then reverse the procedure and put things together and then allow to have their normal bowel functions. And they are going back to their work, of course, after 10 weeks of time. And we closely monitoring all these patients. Some of them, of course, sometimes need uh, follow-up colonoscopies in annually or in once in two years. And some of the blood investigations along with the follow-up. And they can carry out their normal work and the day-to-day -day life. You have to be vigilant about your bowel movements and your family members as well as your loved ones about these cancers. And other thing is, you must get into a screening program to detect these cancers at very early stage. There's no much of a difference how we treat these cancers compared to the rest of the world. At Durden's, of course, we have the latest uh, technology and advancement to treat these cancers. Only difference is, when we compare to the rest of the world, they detect these cancers at very early stage compared to us. That's why we encourage people to come and do their screenings done. Meet your specialist and get your risk assessment done according to the risk and they will allow you to undergo certain investigations and get yourself checked. This is a curable disease and you should come forward and get the maximum benefit. And we are helping you 24-7. We have the access from our surgical department and you can contact directly and we are always helping you to give a better outcome.